folks, this is Dave at Creative Craft House. We make uh, quite a few cipher systems, some our own design and some historical, like the Confederate Army, the Union Army, the Mexican Army cipher, the, the Alberti cipher from the 14th century. Um, and this may be my favorite one of all. Um, it's an historical cipher, but it's of recent history, something that I can relate to because it's certainly in, in my time period. This is called the Diana Cryptosystem. And it's never been made before, uh, something available to the public. It was used um, throughout the Vietnam period, uh, the 60s and 70s, and actually in through the 80s and early 90s by the U.S. Army Special Forces, the Green Berets. And uh, on the back we put their, uh, their logo here. Um, it is uh, available currently in, in two sizes, I think, until I see which one people prefer. Kind of a, one that's a little easier to read and handle, and kind of a, you know, one you put in your shirt pocket, five and a half inches and uh, four inches in diameter. Very, very powerful. In, in fact, uh, considered, uh, if used as intended, considered unbreakable. Um, and we're actually, uh, you know, putting our money where our mouth is on this. And it, we're providing a, an encoded message with the cipher, and if you are successful in solving it, there will be a 200, the first person <laughs> successful in solving it, there will be a $200 prize and an actual uh, green beret. It's, it, uh, it may be interesting to, to you to know the, the, the kind of the backstory to this. I was contacted by a Green Beret who actually used this in the field for a long period of time during the Vietnam uh, War and after. And he asked me not to provide his name, so I um, respect that. Uh, because he, he did not want this to get lost uh, in history. Uh, it was used in the 60s, 70s, 80s, early 90s and has since been replaced by you know, more modern techniques. Um, but extraordinarily powerful and easy to use. You see you've got, you've got uh, an outer stationary wheel, this wheel turns, and then you have this little window in here. The outer wheel is the alphabet that goes clockwise, the, this inner wheel goes counterclockwise, the alphabet. And likewise, the letters in the window are counterclockwise, A through Z. And that's, the, that's what the cipher thing doesn't come apart, it stays in, in one piece. Um, quite easy to use um, in terms of encoding and, and decoding uh, uh, clearly, but as I said, incredibly difficult to, to determine the message if you don't know the secrets. What made it so powerful? Well, it used something called a one-time pad. A one-time pad was a series of random letters uh, generated which provided the key for working the cipher. Every cipher has to have a key of any type, has to have a key of some sort. Typically it might be a key word or a key phrase. But this cipher used what's called a one-time pad. It was essentially a key that was never used again. Now that key had to be available to both the sender and the receiver, but it was only used once. Um, another thing that made it so powerful was, um, I mean, the other feature of this was the actual disk itself. You had to have the disk, you know, the disk itself. Sometimes the slang for this was the whiz wheel. Uh, it was all. They also used some what are called were called mission code words. That is abbreviations for commonly used phrases. It's another layer of. Uh, security. And finally, the messages were sent over high frequency using Morse code. So Morse code in itself is, in, you know, in a sense, it's a bit of a cipher system, if you're not familiar, really familiar with it. So all those four layers of things, particularly the one-time pad, uh, made it uh, very difficult. Now, one of the nice features of this is that um, the, the Green Beret, who used this thing for so many years, actually wrote the instruction sheet and it's really extensive. It includes some history, um, you've got some actual uh, mission code words that were used um, in a very detailed uh, process of how to use it. Which uh, I tried to take uh, and simplify a little bit for you um, in this because you also get this encryption worksheet which I can email to you so you can have it on file and uh, easily reproduce it. And I wanted to show you how to actually use the cipher so you wouldn't be scared away by it.
because anyone um, can use this to send you know, secret messages. Uh, particularly if you've got the encryption worksheet, I think it would be a little bit easier. Now I'm going to I'll try to go around to the other side of the camera so you don't have to read upside down. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Let's see if we can use the cipher in the encryption worksheet to start to encode a message which I've prepared here. Now you'll notice looking at the worksheet you've got uh, three uh, rows of uh, blocks and each block is five letters. When sending encoded messages, no matter what system you're using, you're sending blocks of encoded letters, uh, either four or five, uh, depending on your, the system. Um, and you do this so that you don't give away word length. Uh, you don't use spaces, you don't use punctuation. Uh, typically on cipher systems, uh, you, there's no, no numbers, there's just numbers, letters spell out numbers. Although, on some of our own, we have ciphers that do use actual numbers. But this is more typical where they're not there. Now, what I've done is I've, on line two, it says uh, the, the message. Write, write down your message. So this particular message is, uh, meet me at site 22 at 10 a.m. Thursday next. Now, you notice the last letter here didn't, last the message, there was, the, ends at the T, but typically what they would do is you'd always send blocks of five, so anything left over would just be an X and encode it as such. Um, and the first line is our one-time pad uh, letters, or could be a key phrase if you wanted less security, also easier to use, or a key word repeated over and over. But this is an actual from a one-time pad. One-time pad, pad you can, you're just generating random letters. There are computer sites now that give you ran a series of random letters. So that's the ultimate security. So I've written down the things that I know. I know my message. I've written down the, these random letters that I'm going to use as the key. Now how do I use the system to encipher my message? Okay. Well, the, uh, this, the, both, the, both the worksheet and right up, actually written right on the wheel itself will tell you what the wheels do. So it's, you know, Pretty, pretty straightforward. The outer wheel is the letter from the, uh, the, the keyword or the one-time pad letter. So this first letter that I need to encode is the letter M. And I set the, the outer letter, which is U, to correspond with M. The, the inner wheel is the message text wheel. And then I look in the window to encrypt my first letter, which is a T. The window is the encrypted letter. Now my next one-time pad letter is H. My text message is E, so I'm going to take the H and align it with the E and read in the window the coded letter O. I've got to encode in the second E of meet. It's under E is under the one time pad letter is O. So my there's O and E and the encrypted letter is the H. This process repeat. I'll do one more just to get the idea. The one time pad letter is C. My text letter is T. So C on the outer, T on the inner, my coded letter is E. Get the idea? It's really quite fast and convenient. Now, to go the other way, so let's suppose you're given this encrypted message. Well, it's just it's very similar, except that you'll know you'll know the first row because you have to have access to that one-time pad or that key phrase, and you'll know, of course, the coded message that you got. You've got to fill in the text message in the middle. So we'll simply uh, use what we know. We know in the first case that the outer wheel is U, and that the coded um, the coded letter is T. So I got to put my inner wheel on T. So what letter corresponds to the U on the one-time pad, the big wheel, and the T in the coded? Well, it's the M. So we just work backwards and repeat that process. Okay. So pretty straightforward. Whether you're uh, coding or uh, decoding uh, to write a message which is extraordinarily secure. Okay?
So these are made right here in our Florida shop, uh, in Hudson, Florida shop. Um, and I wish to thank the, uh, very much the Green Beret who guided me through this process of coming up with the wheel. All right, Dave at Creative Craft House.